welcome to our 15th episode of the Pizza and PE podcast. Today, we have a very special guest as we have a former student of Kim and Keith's, Madison Martin, joining us today. And I will allow Kim to then take it from here so you can introduce our guest. Well, first, I'm so glad to be back. We have delayed our pizza deliveries over the summer because we've been quite busy in central office. That's one of the busiest times. But um, when I reached out to this guest, this is actually, I think we reached out to her, Keith, maybe right before the summer. Yeah. And when we originally created this idea to do this Pizza and Pee podcast, this guest was on our number one list to have on because we wanted a student perspective. So we have diverse guests and we wanted a student perspective. And you and I both looked at each other as like, well, let's ask one of our former students that you and I both were had the privilege to, to teach. Correct. This guest, her name is Madison Martin. And I taught her at high school, at a uh, high school in North Carolina. And Keith, you taught Madison when she was in elementary school. That is correct. I had her as physical education and health and was able to be her soccer coach. Keith, you had her as an elementary PE teacher. And we constantly in our conversations, being central office and the impact of PE, we constantly share and reminisce our stories about some of the students that we've taught in the past. And Madison obviously is one of those special students that you and I both had. Um, I still can remember where she sat in my health classroom because I had tables. I still have a card that she made me when I ran my very first marathon at Disney World. I should have gone into the office to get it, but she made me this card that she drew all these pictures of even Cinderella's castle, Mickey Mouse ears, and she tracked where I was going to run all 26 miles and said, okay, after 13, you'll be near Cinderella's castle. After this, you'll be at MGM Studios. After this, you'll be at Animal Kingdom. It was amazing. Um, I still have that like a lot of teachers save some of those mementos that make them feel good from students, uh, cards, whatever thoughts, whatever they, they write, we keep those things and we hold on to those things. Cause even some days when we're not um, at our best or we're feeling challenged, sometimes we go in and we look at some of those things that students have given to us in the past to remind us, Hey, this profession is incredible. And I'm so glad that I chose to be an educator. So Madison Martin, um, I'm going to bring her on on uh, onto the show in just a moment after Keith does his pizza fun fact. But um, it's she, uh, she honestly is just she's like family to me now. So when the audience hears her call me Aunt Kimmy, we had this special bond. You know, health teacher to soccer coach. And then even afterwards, we stayed in touch texting because she ended up going into the Air Force Academy and she'll tell her story, but that has been a dream of hers ever since uh, elementary school. And I believe in second grade, she made the commitment that I want to go into the Air Force Academy and she'll tell that story. But her and I have been um, connected ever since. I look at her more as, um, than a student. I look at her as like, again, like my niece. And um, it's one of those special bonds. I'm so glad that she's here today. And I'm not going to get teary eyed, but uh, I just want you we know to know you know how special she is. All right. You can cry, though, if you want. You know, I don't know. We but have I, some I tears on that. demand. We should. Okay. I, I'll just never forget her getting the nomination to go to the Air Force Academy. She called me up and she was just like, I did it. I got the nomination. And um, it's one of the first ones to hear. And then even when she had this award ceremony at the high school that we were at, we always did a huge like end of year ceremony for our graduates. And she was honored that of her scholarship to go to the Air Force Academy. And she's like, Kimmy, make sure you get pictures. And I had to go right in the right in the very front and get pictures and send them to her. And I was close to her family, her mom and dad, too. So it wasn't, um, I don't know, just inappropriate relationship. It was just we were very close as as teacher to student to now family and I consider like I said to my audience, like like my niece. So, so is that one of those old school cameras that you had to like click, rewind, click, and then turn it into CVS, you know? Yeah. And, you I know. think it was an iPhone 4, buddy. 
maybe it was, I don't even know if it was a four by then, but it was an iPhone, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I still have those pictures, by the way. So All right. All right, get to the pizza fun fact. Are they in color? Get to the pizza fun <laughs> fact. All right, well, listen, I can say a lot of cool things about uh, Madison as well. However, I'm going to let her talk about it in the interview process of this. And we're going to go with the pizza fun fact. So with the pizza fun fact for this one, uh, with the timing of this podcast and the Olympics going on in Tokyo, Japan right now, I thought I would share this, that popular pizza toppings in Japan are squid and mayo jaga. Whether or not I'm saying mayo jaga right or not, I don't know, which includes mayo, potato, and bacon. And both of these guys will tell you first and foremost that mayo and me don't mix. The sight of it, the smell of it, anything, even mentioning it is making me a little want to throw up a little bit. But that's what they eat in Tokyo, Japan. So you, would, you don't want to leave that pizza out on the kitchen counter overnight and then eat it for breakfast pizza because it's got mayo to it. We're leaving it far for too long and then serve it. Yeah, that's what we want to do. The fact that that's even an ingredient for a pizza is just appalling. The mayo. <laughs> All right, let's get Madison on. Here we go. Hey, 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 Madison. Hey, Kimmy. Hi. <laughs> Keith, What's I gotta, happening? I gotta ask. Would you rather eat a pizza with pineapple or with mayo? Pineapple, <laughs> hands down, <laughs> because mayo is my nemesis. You know, like Superman has kryptonite. <laughs> if I'm around an open jar of mayonnaise, I will literally lose it, and you will have to clean up the floor. Yeah, <laughs> Madison. Every single time we go out to eat with with, with Kramer. He will always, always check with uh, the wait staff. And he always says, hey, so does this sauce have any mayonnaise or ranch sauce to it? Because that'll just make me, Wah! and it won't be good. Like he has to go into detail what mayonnaise and ranch. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, mean, I gotta agree with Keith. Uh, I'm not a big mayonnaise or ranch person either. I never understood it. See, Kimmy, this is why we have that special bond that you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. All right, well let's let's get right through this, you guys. You know, now that we're going there. Madison, who was your favorite? Who was your favorite teacher? Me you, or Keith? You know, every teacher and instructor and coach I've had uh since the beginning have led me to where I am now. And so both of you, uh Keith being elementary and you being high school have both had a huge impact on my life and where I'm at. So I just want to say thank you. And also shout out to Laura Shockley and Katrina Waltower for being there since the, the beginning of when I started my dream of becoming a pilot for the Air Force. So a very political answer. Good job. <laughs> Look at her. Look at her. Wow. She's not going to go there. She's and not going to go there. It's almost like my two kids. Cora and Boyce always say, Mom, who do you like better? I love them differently. I love them the same, but you love them differently. Well, okay. I can attest here, Kim, you know, oh. to, to two of the other teachers that she mentioned in this, because I worked with those ladies that they are amazing Absolutely. teachers and amazing. They are other amazing people that are in her, part of her life, because I know those ladies well, and they truly, truly are. Like if I was a kid coming up through a system, an elementary school system, I would absolutely love to have them as teachers. That's and Katrina Waltower is, you know. I, I had a different relationship with Katrina than I did with Laura. I mean, I knew Laura and we, we were really, we were close, but like Katrina, I could talk a lot too. She, she would give it to you straight, like whether you needed to hear it that way or not, but she is, I can understand that what Madison said. Yeah. And then like, even knowing Madison, like she, so those who, uh, who are listening or viewing this, Madison, you are a, a you know, Give it to me straight type of person. Um, you know, don't don't uh, don't sugarcoat things. I don't mind having crucial conversations, critical feedback. Just give it to you straight. That's probably a testament to your strength and your success at the Air Force Academy, which I know that where you ended up going after graduating Marvin Ridge High School in North Carolina. Talk to us about um, one. What did you do after high school? 
and your yeah, airport after, training experience? After high school, uh, I had about two weeks from graduation until I had a report to basic cadet training. Uh, but the academy is definitely one of those places that you will not succeed without your classmates, your squad mates, and, and you know, and the friends you build along the way. And honestly, like, I would not have graduated from that place without those friendships and those bonds. Uh, the, the academy definitely emphasizes wingmanship and leadership. And I, I feel like, yes, uh, it's, it's difficult academically and, and uh, from a military standpoint, it's very strict. Uh, and you know, you gotta be physically fit. But when it comes down to it, you will not succeed in those three aspects without uh, your, you know, your classmates and your squad mates and your friends. And so it definitely teaches you how to be a good leader, but most importantly, how to be a good wingman. And that's the, the point of the academy that I, I think, uh, um, you know, other institutions don't necessarily highlight, which I feel like they should. Uh, but on top of that, like the academy was a, you know, set in the foothills of Colorado Springs, beautiful location. And, you know, I was I had that privilege of being an instructor for the glider pilots, which was awesome. And, you know, my senior year, I got to do five solo jumps to earn my jump wings, which I believe is one of two locations in the world where all your jumps are solo. So it's, it was a pretty awesome opportunity. But I just feel like, uh, you know, the academies definitely present opportunities that other, you know, colleges don't um, provide to their students. So it's definitely a, a great opportunity. Um, and, you know, it was a hard four years, but graduation day, uh, you know, you're in tears, your family's in tears, like you put on those butter bars, you become a second lieutenant, and it's the greatest day of your life. So what, how should we address you? Is it Lieutenant Martin? Is uh, it? It's uh, Captain Martin now. Captain Martin! <laughs> I love it! Oh my goodness, I love it. So you, 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 you um, referenced uh, being in a, a good wingman, wingman. Sure. Yes. So talk, talk to our viewers about that. Like, how do they do they put you in scenarios? Do they how do they how do they teach that skill? Because in health education, it's a lot talk about making sure kids apply, not only understand, but apply the skills for a lifetime. So we're really about building student skills. How did the military, how did Air Force Academy build those skills in you? From from day one, uh, you know, basic cadet training, you, you arrive at the academy and you're not greeted with hugs and sunshine and brochures. You're, you're greeted with, uh, you know, stand at attention, keep your mouth shut, seven basic responses uh, and, you know, get, get on your face and do push ups. So uh, it's a it's a very different transition than other colleges that for some people who weren't necessarily mentally prepared. It's, it's a shock. Uh, you know, for me, I was one of those kids in second grade running with my dad singing the uh, phonetic alphabet and reading his uh, 1977 Air Force contrails. So I, I knew from a young age what the military is like, but some of my friends, they get there and they get yelled at straight in their face. Uh, it's a shock. And so, you know, you have to work with your, your uh, squad and your classmates to basically get through these rough times because their goal is to break you down so that they can build you up. And, you know, as a person, you can't be broken down without having someone there be like, hey, you know what, you got this. Yes, it sucks, but we're going to embrace the suck together, which is a common phrase. Um, but out of the, you know, getting through basic was, was one thing, but and I heard this last bit, this mission first, but people always. And we cannot get the mission done without taking care of our people. And that is a, you know, that's being a good wingman. That's looking out every day for each other, saying, hey, you know, how are you doing today? Making that time to go around, you know, you're enlisted, um, and, you know, from other officers, making sure that they're in a good headspace, making sure like everything's good at home. Um, you know, helping them succeed with their dreams and aspirations because when they succeed, you succeed. And so it's just having that overall, like, hey, uh, I'm I'm at this level, but I want to get other people to a level above mine. Like, you want to elevate them and lift them up. And that's how, you know, you succeed as a wingman for others. That is so, like, eye-opening to me, too, about, because this is a lot of what we talk about in uh, and, and I know that you're in the, in the military, but uh, 
when you made the comment mission first, wait, you, what was it? People first, and you, you stay focused on the mission, but then mission first, people always mission. You take care of your people. Because if you don't take care of your people, then the mission's not going to get done. That is amazing. I love that. And embrace the suck together. Embrace the suck. Heard that all throughout the academy. But what, I mean, this is so, that transcends into just how you treat with your families, your, your relationships with people, whether it's, you know, at, at a banking industry or in a school district, you know, I love that. Mission first, people always. I wrote that down. So Madison, you said you did a lot of push-ups. So then I guess that, you know, you should have been all right with that because you did the presidential fitness test, right? <laughs> so didn't that prepare you for that? Keith, I got to say, in my elementary days, pretty much, I would say 80% of my memories come from your class. Like I was a very uh, lost and kind of confused kid. Um, and I didn't quite understand why at the time. But like looking back, you were one of the teachers that I definitely could be myself around. And I I felt like just like being in the gym with you, I felt safe and I felt like, uh, you know, this is someone who cares about people. And I can honestly say, like, I still remember uh, you were teaching like, you know, the elementary version of gymnastics and we were doing somersaults. And gymnastics was the worst thing ever for me. And it was frustrating because I used to be like, you know, held myself high to standards and uh especially when it com comes to like physical stuff. But gymnastics is one of those areas that I could not do. And you threw a bean bag at me to like lighten me up. And I was so bad that I like pegged you with it. <laughs> and uh, but I like I knew that uh, it was OK. It was like safe space to be in because you just allowed me to express myself. And, uh, you know, I, I, rep I pretty much remember almost every single PE uh, thing that you taught because it was just a safe space for me. And it was an awesome way to just release all this ginger frustration I had <laughs> and confusion. And uh, it was just awesome. And I really am thankful for that. Well, I really appreciate you saying that. I mean, it's hard for me to, 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 to keep the waterworks from happening. Because as a teacher, I mean, we just try to do our job the best we can and make connections the best we can. And, you know, oftentimes we don't know the, the extent of those connections until we get students like you that come back. And, and I, you know, as much as social media has, it has its bad points, it has its great points in the fact that it allows even the three of us the opportunity to follow some of our students. And, you know, for, for Andrew and I, which would be a little different than Kim because Kim gets kids at the high school level. I mean, she taught at the elementary level for a long time too, but for Andrew and I, since we never really did that, you know, when a kid remembers us and comes back, you know, cause there's, there's seven years once we're done with, with you guys, it's, it's even better because it's one of those where you get a Facebook request or a Twitter thing and you're like, Oh my God. Yes, I remember them. And, I, and, and, you know, if you can, re you remember the gym where, you know, I had you guys all lined up when mm -hmm. somebody re says, hey, remember me? If you give me a minute, I can tell you exactly where you stood for warm up. <laughs> and that's one of the things that and then I'm, sometimes I have to tell kids, I gotta go, look, you were like eight, nine, ten. Now you have facial hair. <laughs> or or you've grown up into this you know awesome individual that you know remember there's been a lot of puberty has happened from the last time i saw you so you've changed a little bit and you know getting to follow your story you know has is, has been one of those that's you know uh, extraordinarily um proud moment for for as a teacher to see one of your students do exactly what you're doing now. And, 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 you know, Kim and I get to talk about it. Andrew and I get to talk about players that we've coached, but um, Kim and I get to talk about you and we do talk about you probably a lot more often than you would think or know, which I'm going to take that and segue into the next question, which is, you know, tell us about your latest accomplishment, you know, cause we've talked about you going into uh, the Air Force, but tell us this awesome latest accomplishment, which we already know, but we want our viewers to to hear. And who and or what pushed you in this direction? 
So from the academy, uh, you know, we already mentioned that since second grade, my dream was to go to the academy and become an Air Force pilot. And I was on track uh, my senior year. I received my pilot slot and it was, uh, it was an, such an amazing day. Uh, however, a couple months later, um, the academy told me that I needed a waiver to fly, but they couldn't give it to me. I, I needed to become active duty and uh, reapply to become a pilot. So I thought my pilot dreams were over at the time. Um, so I was sent to contracting at Kirtland Air Force Base in Albuquerque. And I thought that I could just, you know, adapt to this new career field. And, you know, as, ever since I was little, my dad told me become the best Madison that you can be. And so I really applied that and I tried to be the best contracting officer that I could be. But I just, you know, I, I wasn't happy. And so I was like, you know what, what do I need to do to be to follow my dream, become a pilot? So I fought for three years to get my waiver. And finally was I applied and I finally was accepted to go to pilot training. So I have been at Vance Air Force Base since one October and I just uh, became a winged Air Force pilot uh, three weeks ago. And now I'm in phase three of training, flying the T1. And in about uh, two months, I have drop night, which is basically where the Air Force tells me what aircraft and which base I'm going to be flying at. And so it's it's absolutely a dream to, to look down right now and, and see my pilot wings on my chest. Um, it's been pretty, basically two decades in the making. And it's such an that day three weeks ago was an the I, I was in tears like it was the happiest moment um, having my my dad, uh, who was also an Air Force pilot, ping, pin on my uh, my pilot wings. Um, so it was really, really special to me. But yeah, I'm really looking forward to finding out which uh, which aircraft I have the privilege of flying for the Air Force. That's amazing. I mean, it's uh, and, and and I know, you know, we, we're, we're talking to other people in the PE world and the fact that Kim and I, again, know your your family, your dad uh, was an Air Force pilot, but then went on to be a commercial pilot. And mm -hmm. just knowing how proud Kimmy and I are of you. I can only imagine the joy that both of you got to share that together because, you know, if I, and you might have to correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, he used to, you used to fly with him all the time, take the jump seat on a plane. Oh just yeah. To go places with you. Especially uh, my senior year at the Academy, the summer before it, um, there was three weeks that I got to spend at home. And so he, he went to the, he did the Europe route a lot. And so honestly, I went on every single trip I could with him and, you know, you would fly to a European city, um, or basically you would get there very early in the morning. Um, you would land, you would take like a two hour nap in the hotel. And then my dad and I would tour the city, um, all day. And then we would go to a restaurant where the, uh, they knew all the pilots and so they just kept bringing out food and alcohol and you have a good time with all the crew um, and then my dad and I did this thing where we did shots around the world so like we did you know limoncello shots uh, and Madrid and uh, you know just different Jameson and in Dublin so just different fun things and then he would go back to the hotel and I would stay out and enjoy the city's nightlife <laughs> and it was honestly the, the best three weeks of my life and you would uh, I would get back really early the next morning I would try not to stay out too late because I, I know my dad would not fall asleep until I was back at the hotel um, but then you would like I would have like two hours of sleep and then we would drive to the airport and usually there would be a first class seat available and so I would just sit up there put the seat recline it all the way back and just sleep all the way back to the state so I had <laughs> it was definitely a privilege I had being a pilot's kid um, but I would not trade those moments with my dad, especially it was right after I found out I lost my pilot slot. So it was the, basically like the time I needed to spend with him to, to really readjust my mind and get focused on uh, the next phase of life. Oh my goodness. You're doing shots with your dad around the world. See, I just look at you well as like, and I know you're a grown adult. My goodness, you have a pilot license, but I just remember you ninth grade health student you know, hair pulled back, 
sitting at the table, you know, while we're just, you know, doing health menus together, those choice led projects. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, so Andrew, Madison and her dad um, would, you know, obviously you see their connection, you know, with obviously her, her dad being one of her mentors of being a pilot, but they would also compete in a lot of athletic events and Spartan races. So I just don't know if you know that, Andrew. So really cool. Yeah, yeah. So my, my dad, um, like I'm such a daddy's girl for sure, but he has always supported me in all of my athletic adventures. He was at every soccer game growing up that he could be at. Um, and then, you know, when I got to college, I had my first hip surgery and uh, I, I realized like I couldn't do really contact sports anymore. So a lot of my physical therapy was biking and swimming. So then I transitioned to uh, triathlons and Ironmans and uh, my dad, he flew from Charlotte to Denver to be there for my first marathon. He he was there. He came the night before for my first Ironman. And, uh, you know, we did facial masks that night in the hotel and just watched movies and kind of just relaxed. And then, uh, he, like, he would be at every single spot. He would follow me throughout the entire Ironman, even on the bike where he can only see me for a split second. He would be there and then I would pass him. Uh, and then, you know, we would say hi. And then he would quickly drive to like, you know, the next place where he could see me on the bike for another second of, of hi, good job. But he followed me through that entire thing. Um, and then I just remember my first my first marathon was the Denver uh, uh, rock and roll marathon. And I was coming around to the finish line and there's my dad, yay, Madison. And I just I stopped running and I went over to him and I gave him a hug. And um, he said, I'm proud of you, dear. And uh, and it was it was just he's always been my biggest support. And yeah, we did the Spartan races together. We did uh, every single distance. So we got our um, the, the combination trifecta medal. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, he's just oh, yeah, he even um, for my century rides for biking, uh, he flew up to Albuquerque to do the day of the dead century ride with me. Now, this man has has not been on a bike since probably high school at the time. And he thought that uh, he, he spent like the last couple months before that just training on like a gym bike. And I just remember we get to about mile 20 and it was up this really steep incline. And I'm just kind of like looking over at him and he's sweating pursuit profusely and I'm just laughing and he goes how far are we and I was like we're only 20 miles in and he goes he might have said a bad word and, <laughs> um, but he stuck with it and uh, yeah he, he's he's definitely um, my biggest supporter when it comes to athletic things and I'm just so privileged to have a dad like him that's uh, that's incredible uh, so but I'm gonna I'm gonna re revisit something that we started with and I want and you can just tell me, you can, you know, Kim and Keith can walk away from it. But seriously, who was your favorite teacher? <laughs> uh, I, I think I they just, both I'm had impact. I know. I'm just, yeah. I'm just, uh, so you talked about your Spartan races and how mm -hmm. you're a fierce athlete and you love competition and, and that drives you. So did your background in sports, do you, do you think your background in sports helped you to be where you are today? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I so said ever since a, a young age, I think it was about three, I started soccer um, and I, I did that up until college. And, you know, for, for having a team sport, again, you build that mentality of, of wingmanship, like you lose as a team, you win as a team. Um, and, you know, if, if someone on the field messes up, you got to be there to back them up. Or if you mess up then you got to, you know, kick it in, in high gear and get back in and help your teammates r recover. And so that's the same mentality in basic. That's the same mentality going through the academy and now in the military and especially in the flying world. Um, and, and, you know, sometimes you mess up and your coach tells you directly, like, hey, like you, you messed up. This is what you need to be better in. And that's going back to what Kimmy said in the beginning, like, uh, you know, you got to be direct. And that's exactly right in terms of sports. Like, you know, your coach is going to be direct with you and you got to be mature enough to take it and be like, yes, how can I better myself so this doesn't happen again? And that's the same thing I do every time I land after a flight. You know, the instructor pilot's going to look at me and be like, hey, this is what you messed up on. This is what you need to do better. And instead of uh, we call it quibbling, you're not allowed to quibble. So instead of, you know, arguing, you just got to be like, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. 
and uh, you know go in the sim for extra practice. Uh, sit at the your you know your your paper your cockpit in your room and practice and become better and study. And you you just gotta pick out your flaws to to make sure that you become the best version of yourself you can be. And that definitely is the same mentality that you know you have to have for any team sport. Um, and that's just like the mental side of it. Of course, physically, you have to be physically fit to be in the military as well. Uh, and so growing up, having, you know, everyday soccer practice and everyday training, uh, you, you just get accustomed to fitness being a huge part of your life. Do you think that, um, I mean, you had that experience with, you know, being a soccer player. Do you think that schools public education, do you think that we provide enough of those uh, PE opportunities, physical activities for, for kids that don't get the opportunity to play those outside sports? I mean, in North Carolina, your experience, you had um, maybe once every week for elementary PE, if you were lucky. And then in high school, and uh, well, let's say middle school, maybe once a day for maybe a semester or 45 days. Then in high school, you only have, an, we're just speaking of North Carolina, mm -hmm. but, but, and then in high school, you only had that one semester and it was 45 days health, 45 days PE. Do you think if you did not have those opportunities outside your club soccer and you did not have those opportunities, do you think that you had been physically prepared? Do you think public education prepares us enough to be mindful of, living a healthy lifestyle? So for me individually, I think it's because I grew up with fitness being a huge part of my life that it was always my, you know, a passion of mine. And so I, th I think in high school specifically, the class that I greatly appreciated uh, in terms of the, the PE side, not the health side, um, was weightlifting because uh -huh. that's something like yeah you can you can play basketball and soccer and flag football and you know all these sports that you, you typically play but no one ever teaches you how to lift unless uh, i think it's more prominent now um than it was when i was going through school but you know i go to the you know i'm, I'm in the gym um, pretty much every day and i look at some of these forms and uh, like these people are going to hurt themselves and they don't have, you know, they don't have anyone to show them like, Hey, this is actually how you're supposed to lift. And I think if, uh, you know, especially with CrossFit and all these other lifting, uh, trainings becoming more prominent in today's society, um, I think schools need to teach these kids how to lift and that it's not about how much weight you can put up, but your form so that they don't hurt themselves and, uh, cause injuries down the line. Um, so that's like one of the, the main things that I would, I would point out in the public school system is, yeah, you can teach team sports, but you know, what, uh, how, what's the percentage of adults that actually go out and, and play team sports versus just going to the gym? Like, like, how do you succeed in a gym, not in a, in a team sport? Cause you know, you get to the adult phase and you walk into a gym and be like, well, how do I use this machine? But now you're too embarrassed to ask. And then you just walk out because you don't know how to use anything. So I, th I think we really need to teach kids how to successfully have a good workout in a common day gym. That's amazing. Yeah, because you took strength and conditioning or weightlifting um, as an elective course in high school. So not it's not a required course. You, you signed up to do that as an elective mm -hmm. course. And correct me if I'm wrong. Did you sign up for that course, too, because you knew that you needed to gain muscular strength and endurance? as well as, um, you know, I know that they, they train you cardi with your cardiovascular endurance too and strength, but the focus is on muscular strength and endurance. Um, didn't you do that because you knew you were going to be taking the, a, a, a fitness test to see if you could get into the Air Force Academy to see if you could pass? Absolutely. Uh, you know, childhood wise playing soccer, I was all running. Like I ran every day. Um, but at the time I was not, you know, I could barely do a pull up uh so i definitely needed uh, keith when i was going through your class i was i was elementary school like yeah i could put up seven pull-ups and pass that uh prison edge. i saw that look uh, but, but you know like, like like high school especially you know being in the academic program that i was in my life was pretty much you you go to school and you study 
you go to soccer practice and then you come home and you basically do homework until 1 a.m. Um, and that, oh, was on a, right. that was on a good night. I never really had, you know, these days, yeah, I'm training twice a day uh, and I can do uh, about 15 to 16 pull-ups weighted. And so like, and I'm putting out like my, my physical fitness has gotten um, so great since I've started weightlifting um, in college. And so uh, I, I think that's another emphasis item is, yeah, you can run, but you really need to start weightlifting, um, especially as you, you get older. And I'm noticing, <laughs> I hope my parents don't listen to this part, but especially <laughs> see my, my dad, like, yeah, he was like a Boston Marathon runner and everything, but I'm teaching him how to how to lift because he, his idea is just, oh, I can run and do push-ups. But um, I really feel like, especially as you get older, you need to start weight training to, to keep, you know, your your bones healthy and, and your muscles healthy. And I, you were in the International Baccalaureate ID program, correct? Yes. <laughs> yes, and it, it helped you. I know that you had your, um, you, you did it to help give you the edge to also do the be, do the, the, the rigorous courses to give you the best potential or the best advantage to get into the Air Force Academy, I know that. And then your 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 fitness test. Didn't we have to? Didn't I have to sign we off? Did. Didn't we? I just thought about that. We did it after school one day, right? We did the CFA. And I had to sign off being like a licensed person. I was like, this you is awesome. <laughs> oh, the memories! I can still see that weight room at that high school. Small, small, small. Wow. Well. Oh. Going forward with that, you know, so thinking about your PE and your physical fitness. So, you know, the background, one of the backgrounds in PE is that it was started as a course to get mm -hmm. people ready for the military because they felt we were falling behind the world physical fitness wise and we needed to physically fit people in the military. Do you think at any given time that any of the PE classes you took with the amount of fitness and or things that you did, did that even prepare you a little bit for the military? So I think the military has, has definitely progressed. Uh, they're going through a whole change in terms of their uh, physical standards. Um, each branch is, you know, developing their their own thing. But now it's a uh, they're working on making it uh, basically career field dependent. So if you're going into spec ops, yeah, you're going to have a harder fitness assessment or ranger school than if you are going into intel or space or you know acquisitions. And so um, I, I definitely think it depends on the career field that you choose going into the military. However, uh, we still have, you know, you're wearing this uniform, you still have, uh, you know, society looking at you every time you go out in it, and you want to, you want to look good, you want to present yourself well as a, uh, you know, respected and physically fit uh, officer or just member of the of the military. Um, and so I, I think that, you know, as, as previously mentioned, that physical fitness, um, and just, you know, eating right and, you know, making it part of your daily thing, not just, you know, an hour a week for PE class needs to needs to be a, a personal decision and needs to be motivated or I guess to put forth more in your mind as an individual to make it more of a priority. Um, and, and, and so I think that maybe for, for me personally, PE in schools, uh, I already had that mentality. And so I don't think it necessarily pushed, pushed me or made me better in the military, but I think for, for other people who don't have the experiences that I did, um, to learning how to stay physically fit and stay healthy and, you know, learning about different macros or learning about how to lift weights. I think that is a huge component to being successful in the military. Yeah. Um, cause I have, I have airmen, especially at my last base who struggled with the PE test or PT test and, um, or how to eat. And so I would do all their macro, make all their macro counting for them. And I would build them uh, fitness training and I would go out and train with them because they didn't know how. Um, and so, you know, I, I know that, uh, I can use my knowledge to help others, 
Uh, but I think learning how to eat and staying physically fit uh, should be highlighted more instead of necessarily the team sports aspect in the physical education. I'm, I'm glad you said that. I mean, things are changing, you know, to more of a fitness base, especially in, you know, one of the things that our group, the three of us are trying to, to do in our school system is, you know, have that lifetime fitness aspect mm -hmm. be a little more out there. So, and, and the good thing is, you know, cause you alluded to this before, how, People need to learn how to be better weightlifters with form in it. And we have some outstanding PE teachers in our district that are doing a great job of that where, you know, you hate to say this to a young lady like yourself, but go, you know, back in your day, <laughs> you're just high school football coaches who just yeah. were, you know, they weren't teaching form and they really didn't care who was in their class. If you weren't a football player, it was, you know, a lot of them didn't care. And, and, it, and that is true, but, as a pilot, but that's changed a lot. I it was mean, uh, tremendously, and that's what I'm saying. Like, so this isn't like Kim when you used to walk to school both ways uphill and four feet. Oh, of I um, am not that much older than you. Not that much older, but just a shout out to all the fantastic health and PE teachers out there. You know, those strength and conditioning teachers; those are the ones that um, I reached out to in our school district so that I can learn better about mm -hmm. form, and it's so different now. Um, it's just one of the things that we're constantly fighting, Madison, is to have more time with our students. You know, you obviously have that time outside of school and you have that deep passion. But I'm so concerned about those students that don't have that deep passion, then don't have those opportunities during the instructional school day because we're so limited in the amount of time that we have that it is a disadvantage for some students who want to go in the military because they may not pass that PT test. So it doesn't even become an option for them after high school. So that's one of the things that really concerns me that we don't even value sometimes and prioritize funding and instructional time where it could be a career opportunity um, for someone even after high school and they can't even get into the military because they're not even, they can't pass the physical test. Yeah, and I think that from elementary school, Keith, the presidential test is actually a good assessment. It's pretty similar to, um, you know, some of the academy and, and cadet uh, tests we were required to do. Um, Kimmy, one of one of the things that, you know, just popped in my brain is, uh, you know, we do field trips all the time for, for education. So why not take a field trip to like a local gym be like, hey, like this is this is this machine. This is how you use it. That way, like in their off time, like, yeah, maybe they could go and now they know how to use that machine and they don't feel like a, like they're alone in the gym. Mm -hmm. they, they, they don't know how to do it. Exactly. That would be fantastic. And it's one of those things that we constantly are trying to maneuver the political landscape mm -hmm. for health and PE to be valued as a um, well-rounded course, even though it is a well-rounded course. A lot of district leaders think that it's just all about ELA, which is language, arts, math, mm -hmm. uh, science for those test scores. And, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of this, too. But I remember even in weightlifting class, I if I had a test that day, I had mm -hmm. all my notes laid out. And so I would, as I was lift and then the other person would go, I'd be studying for the next test because it was literally test after test. And. I never had the time outside of, you know, my, my two hours of soccer practice after school to, to go do fitness on, on my own in high school. Like, especially mm -hmm. the last two years with IB, um, it was, it was literally just test after test. And I remember the, uh, the instructor would have to be Martin, put away your note cards. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's definitely a struggle to, to balance, um, this, and academics in that situation now like uh my days are 12 hours long uh, as far as when they're allowed to keep us and so it's, it's it's basically studying for 12 hours and then um i i have my bike set up in my room i use zwift every day mm -hmm. so um at least i can do that like in the morning before i have to report um and then i have you know my my jack jocks kettlebell and weight set so at least i can have time in my room but yeah it's very hard balancing a a difficult academic or training schedule with, uh, you know, staying physically fit. Yeah. But for you to stay mentally sharp and focused, you know, we see this now with the Olympics that are taking place in Tokyo, the so importance of 
that fitness is not just about, you know, having strong muscles and having a strong heart is that fitness actually benefits the brain and how much it benefits our mental health. Oh, absolutely. Um, especially like going through T sixes for the last nine months, uh, is a very stressful environment. And so having that outlet of, um, working out and definitely allowed me to stay more grounded and not get as stressed as, uh, some other people who didn't really figure out that balance until it was a little too late. Um, so I, I definitely agree that, uh, staying physically fit and even just taking 20 minutes, if, if that's all I have in the day to do a, a bike ride or something, it, it really helps my stress levels and allows me to actually study better and retain knowledge yeah. better. So did you see that with your colleagues? Did they, some of them not make it? Yeah, we had a, we had a, a few drop, um, then a few uh, asked to leave, but it was, it was one of those things where they, they had a difficult time balancing the rigorous academics with uh, the uh, very difficult flying schedule. Um, and they just never took time for themselves. And for me, that was staying physically fit. You know, for others, it might not be that. It might be something else. But they still didn't allow themselves that time to recenter their minds or in their bodies and just uh, take that take that moment for yourself. Well, well said. You have to have those moments to sure. recharge, re-engage. And, and we know that exercise does that. We know what it does for the brain now. It helps you grow those new neural connections, but also helps you to focus better, helps you to relax. All the evidence is out there to support that. And it needs to be talked about more and more, not, not just in education, but just in society in general. So next question for you before we move to Quick Bites, Madison. So now that you've earned your wings, what's next? Uh, hopefully, my dream airframe is the C-17. Um, my my dream base would be in Alaska. And so hopefully, if there's a slot available, I would love to go to uh, Anchorage, Alaska for for Joint Base Elmendorf to fly the C-17. Um, if I can't get Alaska, anywhere on the West Coast uh, would be nice for, for the C-17. So what's the C-17? Is that like massive, like G-force? What? Talk to me like I'm five. <laughs> Uh, C-17 is. So C-17 is, a, it's called the, the Globemaster 3, and it's basically a, a tactical and strategic airlift uh, airframe. So they, they do a lot of transporting troops and cargo throughout the world. Uh, they also uh, do medical so that the back can be transformed into like a, um, like a, a kind of like a hospital a bit. Um, okay. And they, they do, so they do like medical evacuation and airdrop duties. Um, and... So they just, they have a wide variety of missions along with great base locations. Um, and so it's, it's definitely good for, for my personal family life because I can only get stationed stateside. So my spouse will never have to apply for a green card and uh, can continue working where uh, they currently work. Oh, and so, uh, so that, that's, that's one of the benefits because uh, you know, I, I love flying and I love the military, uh, but also, you know, having a spouse, you really want to consider family life. And so that's that's it. That's a huge uh, part of it for me. Um, so, you know, so, so that I'm happy and my spouse is happy. Um, and so the C-17 is just one of those airframes that provides a great work life balance for me. That's amazing. Do you see yourself um, kind of going through your dad's footsteps and maybe become a commercial airline pilot someday? <laughs> With all the news right now, absolutely not with people, but I would love uh, <laughs> FedEx or FedEx or UPS would definitely be uh, my my dream. I would love to do 20 active uh, 20 active duty and then go to the reserves or guard for my last 10 to make it a to make it the full 30 years of military service. And while I'm in the reserves or guard, um, work for FedEx and UPS or UPS. Um, so that's kind of like where I see myself right now. So the Air National Guard that's here in Charlotte, they have some of those bigger planes C similar to the C-17, correct? Uh, I believe Charlotte is a C-17 Guard, or yeah, Air National Guard unit. So I feel like well, um, last year when they did the like the flyover in the state for um, frontline workers, I think it was a C-17 that would fly over and you know do the little wing flap as it was going by. 
I think the I think that's the one forty fifth. Um, but yeah, the Charlotte definitely has C seventeens, and so when I tell people that and they know I'm from Charlotte, they're like, "Oh, you want to go back?" Uh, no, I don't. <laughs> Ever since I went to the academy and I and I saw it, like I lived in the mountains, and then Albuquerque had the mountains. Um, yeah. Me in Oklahoma, like I really miss the mountains, and then also like the lack of humidity and no bugs. Um, I, I love the New Mexico, Colorado part of the States. Not so much Oklahoma. <laughs> Look, this is where your favorite PE teacher lives. I know, I know. I'll still be back to visit, but uh, I, don't, I don't think my spouse would be happy there either because uh, rock climbing is a huge part of our lives now. So. We have the White Water Center. You can rock climb there. <laughs> Not that the it counts as much. Yeah. So, uh, um, I, I had uh, just one small quick follow-up before we get to quick bites, because this is something going back to the, the physical fitness aspect, right? As a pilot, what is probably the most important part of the, the, the or physically demanding part of your job mm -hmm. that you need to keep sharp? Because, you know, a lot of people will look at a pilot and go, really, you sit and you, you sit for your job. So why, you mm -hmm. know, why is it important that you are physically fit for that? For sure. Uh, so, you know, going to the fighter and bomber guys, you, you have, uh, and even like in the T6s, you have a lot of Gs put on your body at one time. Uh, and so you need to stay physically fit so that your body can handle um, the strain of those Gs um, to accomplish the mission. And then for, you know, the path I'm on, the, the, cargo, the cargo route, like we're still part of the military, like we still get deployed. Like if we're shot down, we still have to, you know, evade and escape and we still have to stay the physically sharp, uh, physic or our bodies and our minds. Um, so the military side, you definitely have to stay physically fit as a, as a pilot. Um, but again, it's also that uniform, like you're going to all these countries, like you want to, you want to look good and sure. you want to, you know, you want to show that, you know, we're part of the United States Air Force, the number one Air Force in the world. Like, be proud to wear the uniform, be proud to wear the flag. And, and, uh, one way to do that is making sure that you're proud of your body and you're proud of, uh, you know, where you are physically and mentally. Um, so again, that goes just back to being the best you, you can be because when it comes down to it and you're asked to, to perform these missions, you have to be at your peak shape and your peak mentality, uh, every single day. I am so proud of you. Oh my goodness. I'm so proud of you. I just remember also that we, um, in the Spartan race days, that me, you, and your dad went and did that volunteering so we can get the free race. That's absolutely right. We're <laughs> 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 seven packets <laughs> at the White Water Center. And that's an Alan Martin specialty right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. And for all our listeners, um, I don't know if we said this on air, but Madison's dad used to be – like my go-to substitute teacher when I would have to be out as a health teacher. And then Keith, I think he was a substitute elementary PE teacher for you too. So, I mean, just for our viewers to, to see just how special and the relationship that we've had with you and your family um, during our teaching days. And then obviously after has been one of the greatest pleasures of, of being an educator. So, okay. Um, quick bites, you guys, you ready? Yep. Let's do it. Uh, let me get this first keyed up. Quick bites. All right, my friend. So this is the fun part of the show where Andrew and I come up with just some funny, thoughtful questions that Kim has no idea what we're going to ask you because we don't tell her because half the time she would probably shoot it down, but <laughs> it's fun. And, and, and I didn't mean to say shoot it down to a pilot. My goodness. So anyway, um, so we're going to start off with some questions that may be thought for first thing that comes to your mind, hammer away. If we have to revisit an answer, we will. And Kim will drop in somewhere in here. So I'm going to start with uh, a very thoughtful question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Why or why not? Yes, it is. Okay, so why? Because uh, a sandwich has uh, two pieces of bread with uh, something in between. And so you got the bun with the, the, the meat. Okay. So that's a sandwich. That's a good answer. I like it. All right, so Madison, what makes you laugh no matter what? 
Uh, the inside jokes my spouse and I have, it's, it's something we could do uh, like five years ago. We'll come up today. We'll just start dying laughing. It's like, uh, she's my best friend. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you're very witty. <laughs> I, love, I, I love your humor. You you would get it. I remember just seeing you as a ninth grade student. I would just kind of look over at you and we would just kind of start laughing about something and you just got. <laughs> I, I do believe uh, Sharon's terminology for that is a, a spicy ginger. Yes. <laughs> But I do, I do make a, every Friday, we kind of just have a, a, a social in our flight rooms, uh, may, it could or could not have alcohol involved. And uh, I'll, I'll do a little uh, stand up skit with jokes and it, it makes me laugh. I think it makes me laugh more than the other people, but I like, you know, you got to make people laugh it can feel good, helps de-stress. A stand up comedian is your next career. <laughs> Okay, so if you can have one song play every time you enter a room, what oh, would it be? Oh, uh, it's you. Oh. I would probably do a song from Pink. No, I would probably do Dropkick Murphys. Actually, I was either debating between Flogging Molly or Dropkick Murphys. Nice. I have to go, uh, really? Murphys. Yeah. We saw Dropkick Murphys in Boston one year, uh, Keith, Andrew, and myself, over yeah. St. Patrick's Day during a National Shape America conference. Day before St. Patty's Day. It was right, oh, right before St. Patty's Day. I did not know you were Dropkick Murphy and Floggy Molly fan. I really thought that you had been like I would either It would either be uh, shipping up to Boston or Drunken Lullabies. I just I couldn't decide between the two. Great song. I like Madison as an adult. <laughs> But Kim, see, she's on the rock side of things, not the Katy Perry side that you're on. I, I was confused by your, your response there, Kimmy. <laughs> well, I know that you went, you saw in Charlotte, and I just think she's just strong. Oh, years, pink, and, you know, pink's performing is amazing for sure. Yeah. But every That's time I walk I, into a room, oh, I'm doing, I'm doing something a little more with a kick, you know. Yes. Oh man, <laughs> I like. Adulting with a mad Madison, <laughs> totally different. Okay. All right, so then that's gonna lead that, that leads in perfect to this next one. What's your guilty pleasure song? Oh, <laughs> that's that could be dark. That's mm -mm. That could guilty be pleasure song. It's something that you, when you hear it, you have to play it. But you know, if other people are like, like look at you, like you're listening to that, it just doesn't. Oh. Fit I would like somewhere totally different. Yeah. Okay, so, you know, I have this playlist. It's like a, it, it goes for anywhere from 1920 to 1950s that I listen to when I'm cooking. Um, and I just kind of jam out on that. So I can't really pick one song, but probably like, you know, any of the, the Frank Sinatra uh, era time. I love some oldies too. I think that's awesome. A little blue eyes. It's nice. Okay, so now, Madison, if you were given the opportunity to travel, to time travel, would you rather go to the past or to the future? Uh, the future. Okay. Is there, something, question. is there something you would tell your future self? Uh, <laughs> yeah, invest in Bitcoin uh, <laughs> when you're in high school so that you don't have to work when you're older. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Memorize lottery ticket numbers. Um, <laughs> so here, here's the next one. When I dance, I look like what? <laughs> um, <laughs> like I should stop. I will say Oklahoma is big on uh, two-stepping, oh. and I absolutely love two-stepping. I actually teach my bros how to – to two step better for their wives. Um, no, I love, I do love dancing. I really do. It's so, did you get a lot of dancing from from Keith? You know? <laughs> so, freshman year at the academy, you're not allowed to leave. So, on Friday nights, they would actually, if you wanted to, they would teach you how to two step. So, I had this dance partner there, and we would go to like the local country bar, and like we got to the point where he was like throwing me over his shoulder, uh, doing a bunch of like flips and everything. Like, we got really good. Um, and uh, it was really fun. And so I just kind of, you know, I, I 
don't do that any anymore because I don't have a, a dance partner like that. But yeah, I do love dancing. We we go to the city sometimes and go to these different these different bars and clubs, and we just have a great time. So it's awesome. But I'm not going to be on Dancing with the Stars anytime soon. <laughs> you don't know that. I mean, you go with your career. And I will say, if you say you want to do it, you oh, will God. make it happen. <laughs> I've never met somebody so determined that says, I am going to do this. I don't care how long it takes, but you will make that happen. <laughs> that's I uh, that's not one of those things, though. <laughs> I absolutely adore you. Oh, my God. I love you so much. Okay. So this is going to – and I'm not being um, – you know, I'm not trying to draw the attention back toward to the formative years of your PE experience, mm -hmm. but what was your favorite elementary PE activity? Oh, uh, the flag football, because when you were playing, I got really competitive and I had to defend you and I had to like make plays around you. Like it was my personal goal to defeat you in flag football. Um, also, <laughs> just like in, in recess playing Foursquare. Foursquare was like the best thing ever going through elementary. That is great. Oh, and you can't forget the kickball tournaments or um, the end of the end of school year where we all compete on things. Field day. Field day. Yeah. Tug of war. That was the best one. Yeah. Oh. I th I'm telling you, Keith. Like, eighty-five percent of my memories of elementary school are from your class. <laughs> awesome. Two decades later, and I still can tell you pretty much everything we did from jump jump rope uh, uh -huh. heart. yeah um to sitting on those little scooter things oh yeah uh, yeah. Scooters. yeah and something with uh bean bags and hula hoops on the ground that was oh, and then uh yeah the just the tag with the flag football things that was fun too what do you remember about health class i want to bring it back to me uh, give me the <laughs> amount of colors that i've used in your class like <laughs> i know um Basically, just the, the music, honestly, like you would have the instrumental version of all the today's hits. And yeah. it was just like just vibing with the music was so different from every other class in, in high school. Like, yeah, you just got to like be yourself and have a great time and just chill and laugh. And I mean, you, you don't laugh in any other class in high school. I remember kids would actually come to my class saying, I wasn't allowed to go to the bathroom in my other classes. Yes. So thankfully, you allowed us to use the restroom. And I look at you guys going, what? Why won't they let you use the bathroom? You got to go. Yeah, that, was a, that was a huge thing. Yeah, no, um, you, don't, you don't go to the bathroom, especially in IB. You might miss something. Well, they used to even, you guys would tell me stories that teachers would give out tickets. You would get three tickets at the start of the very first day of class. You would get three tickets. Those are your three bathroom tickets. Now, if you didn't use those bathroom tickets throughout the whole semester, so you only got three bathroom tickets for the whole 90 days. And if you didn't use them, then you got extra points or extra credit for your grade that you turned in those tickets at the end of the year. Yeah, that's not right. Because uh, hydration is the key to success. So. I was appalled. I was like, you are kidding me. But I mean, I was always like, teacher talk. Don't, don't tell me about other teachers. We're one big team here. But I mean, as much as you say that we chilled, but I mean, we you guys had to do some work though. Oh, for sure. But I just meant as far as, uh, yeah. you know, you, you just got to hang out with your friends, talks, learn about things that actually apply to your adulthood. Um, Cause I, I couldn't tell you, even through my yeah. college things, especially like with my major, like if you put a paper in front of me, mm -hmm. uh, with, with a problem on it, there's no way I would be able to do it. But if you put like, hey, calculate these macros and calculate like, uh, you know, like build a workout set, I, I could do that in like 10 minutes. Um, so I, I just think like things should be taught that are applicable to real life. Like I still, uh, I know this isn't really PE related, but I was just teaching my friends who are in their thirties how to do their own taxes this year. Like, no, yeah. I, I I just feel like the education system focuses so much on things that your mind will just erase uh, when it's when the class is over versus things that we should apply throughout adulthood. And I, I, I feel like that needs to be the focus. But I, I, I know like the, the basis behind it as far as, you know, the political and financial parts of public school system. But um, so I won't get into to, to that. But yeah, I just, you know, there just needs to be a more focus on what's applicable in your adult years. Well said. Yeah. Did you, okay. So did you use any of those uh, 
mind map tools and how to create content mind maps when you're in the Air Force Academy to remember things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm more of a checklist person, so I just I, I have this running checklist uh, in Excel sh spreadsheets. I'm pretty sure Sharon and I have like 15 Excel spreadsheets just for finances. So it's it's just a oh. uh, yeah, especially with her being a software engineer, we're just she's just like building different things uh, for us to to make sure that we don't forget uh, things in our in our daily lives or you know. I did not know she's a software engineer. Amazing. Uh, yes. Which, to our listeners, I am going to be able to meet Sharon for the first time. Um, not this Saturday, but next Saturday. So almost a week and a half from now. Um, a really cool thing is that, you know, I told you how special, and this is to our, our listeners and viewers, but uh, my daughter's going to be going to University of New Mexico uh, for as a freshman next year. And being from Charlotte, North Carolina, I'm like, how am I going to ship her stuff? And Madison's like, ship it to my house in Albuquerque. So yeah. we were able to ship all these boxes to Albuquerque. So I'll meet Sharon for the first time when we uh, load up and move my daughter into college. It's just, it's one of those things that I don't think that there's any other profession that has the connections that we do and the lifetime connections that we do as teachers and we got to remember that um that that is really what it's about and i'm going to circle back to what madison said from the very beginning mission first but people always you know so think about that our mission is to teach kids but it's our 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 our, our role is to connect with kids first you're supposed to save that for the aha moments this is still quick bites <laughs> I I just want to, uh, madison needs to know like just how much I've been so grateful to say this is unbelievable. And when I'm telling my to, to my spouse saying, you won't believe this. You know, the student council member, soccer player, to my my health student, you know, we've kept kept in contact. Remember how I keep telling you about Madison, one of my, you know, awesome students? He's like, Yeah, I'm like, well, she lives in Albuquerque. We're gonna be able to ship Cora's stuff there, which you knew Cora when she was probably seven years old. Yes, I did. Oh my goodness! It is just amazing. I, it's just amazing how how what a what a circle that education is, and the the, the lasting relationships that you have with uh, some of these students is. I don't. It's it's really made me think about things on this podcast and seeing you here and hearing your voice and answering these questions. And wow, you just your responses are so so mature and so spot on right now. Um, Madison about a lot of things that are going on. So I just really appreciate you coming on. There's still some more quick bite questions. <laughs> <laughs> That's what people are here for. Uh, okay. What do you Andrew, got? you're up. All right. Well, <clears throat> my next one, um, goose or maverick? Maverick. That's maverick. awesome because I'm going to build right off of that. Better flying movie, Iron Eagle or Top Gun? Uh, well, Iron Eagle. I love Iron Eagle. That's a great movie. Louis Gossett Jr. You can't forget that, man. Chappie. Chappie. Chappie too clear. He didn't make it home though, right? Did Chappie? Yeah. He did? Okay. And I just have one more for you, Madison. Uh, what is one thing that is on your bucket list? Uh, I would love to visit every continent okay, that's cool yeah. which ones have you not gone to uh well one of them for for antarctica the c-17 actually does the antarctica missions so that's part of my my goal is to to be a part of that uh mission um and then i haven't been to asia yet are those the only two yes okay well then, before we sign off, the last um, quick bite is really Madison. Who's better, me or Karen? <laughs> who's who's, uh, better, who's, uh, who's uh, better, me or Kim, and why me? <laughs> I guess she'll just have to wait for uh, for Friday for that one. Yeah, we're gonna have a a uh, for our viewers. We're we're gonna meet up on Friday. Friday happy hour. Friday happy hour. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And have, have Sharon join us. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll definitely see if she wants to. She well, she'd be like, she, warn her first, please. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you said that very nice. <laughs> yeah. uh, she might have to have a maybe a drink before she joins us. <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, the three of us, uh, I, I feel like Friday is going to be a blast. So yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I'm excited. Like, oh, okay. So Andrew, do you see why that she's so, uh, incredible? I can and, see it. <laughs> Andrew, I just want to say thank you for, uh, keeping an eye on these two for me <laughs> and, well, and being the middle ground for sure. <laughs> yeah. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a tour, but it works, but we make it work. A full-time job. <laughs> Don't let him fool you, though. He's the shenanigator, too, but we uh, always falls back on one of us. Madison, you know what these two would do to me? In fact, it's sort of abusive. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to talk this out to you. You know, when we are, you know, we're still at home a little bit. We're, we're probably going to go back in the office soon. But these guys would hide my cell phone. They would call it. It's, it's up in the the ceiling. It's there. They did. And then one time they changed like my settings on my computer. So every time I got an email, it would say some kind of saying. They they would they mess with me all the time. Now, so, so. Kimmy, I, I got to say, in the, in the military world, we have these things called common access cards, also known as like CACs, and you need to put them in a computer in order to to log on. Um, and if you left it in the computer and walked away from the workstation, people would go on your email and send a, a message to everyone in the workplace. Like, Hey, I'm bringing pizza on Friday or I'm bringing donuts tomorrow. Or people, would pull, or they would pull out the, uh, the cack from the computer and hide it in the freezer and freeze it like in a block of ice or put it in the ceiling tiles. So, uh, you know, if you can be, I don't, I don't want to. You know, That's be, on, be, be on their side here, but if you leave things out for them to find, we can we can do a whole podcast just on the things that we've done. <laughs> I it's a good thing that we really love each other, that we get along so well. For sure. Oh my goodness! Do you remember when Keith would uh, chime in on the smart board when Keith and I worked at the same you know school system and I'm teaching you guys health and all of a sudden his little mug face would come with a red nose and come onto the screen. Uh, and you know, I turn it off that all of a sudden teachers can just email and be like a FaceTime automatically and then I'm teaching some kind of content mind map and there's Keith's mug. <laughs> Oh, distracting uh, everybody. And then, then, then you're in the background. Tell them I said hi. Tell them I said, I'm like, ah. Oh. Uh, oh, you guys are the best. Those were the days. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad that you still have a sense of humor, though, and you're able to stay well balanced, even in your stressful job. Oh, for Good sure. For you. you have to. Yeah, you've always been, you've always had that ability. So, anything else, Keith and Andrew? I'm done with mine. I'm good. I'll save the uh, the other stuff for Friday. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. More appropriate talk for Friday. <laughs> uh, so, Captain Martin, what's the what? How do you say goodbye? I know you say standby on other things, but is there a formal like out? What do you say? Uh, I mean, goodbye is normally <laughs> the word. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so for, for pilots over the radio, uh, if you're, if you're leaving a certain frequency, you normally say, see ya. Um, okay. You could do that, but that's, that's kind of a, uh, I would say fapey thing, but, but only, uh, pilots that understand that's first time instructor pilot thing. But, All right, Captain Martin. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Oh that god. was hilarious. Oh my god. We basically say goodbye. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. All right. Well, I said mine, you guys, of my aha moment. Yeah, it turned into a long bite. I mean, <laughs> look at all these notes I took. That's a lot of notes. I got, I got more notes than you do, Mom. Let me I doubt it. No, Let me no. see. Let me see. Oh wow! You, All you, right, ready? You do win. Where's your where's your, where's your sticky notes? <laughs> Keith has so many sticky notes everywhere. If you Girl, ever, I, 
As soon as I'm done with the question, I toss them. You, that's what you guys don't see off screen. Is as soon as I'm done with the question, I toss it because I can't have it in front of me anymore. So there's sticky notes all over the bedroom right now. You guys, I've never seen somebody have so many sticky notes. They are all over the office, all over the. Because when you're done with something, you take it down. Boom. Yeah, but you keep them. They're all. Oh, not all of them. Sometimes, sometimes, but you're able to find what you need. You know what they all say. This is how my brain <laughs> works. Allow me to work my brain the way it works. <laughs> right. Everyone's brain's different. This is right. I'm just. <laughs> all right. Well, I already said my uh -huh. mission first, people always. Well, that that cool? Yeah. Um, well, there I have so much I could talk about, but the uh, three things that really stood out, you got to take care of your people. Right. Mm -hmm. We talk about that all the time, especially in schools and with the graders and all. We got to take care of our teachers so the teachers can take care of the kids. You know, relationships and experience shape you and caring, nurturing, loving adults make all the difference. So when you have someone in your corner at all times, that you know, that has your back, you're more likely to open up and do things you want to do because you know you have support. It's such a huge thing. And some of our kids, they don't experience that. And that's why, again, teachers are so valuable because you can be that one person for, for, for that kid, just like Madison's dad is for her. You know, not all of our kids experience that. Unfortunately. And then the last thing she said before she got off, now, education focuses too much on things. We will forget instead of focus on what's applicable in our adult years. That is spot on. Because focus more on the health, wellness, things that are going to drive us and guide us and keep us uh, clear mentally and physically throughout our lives. And if, if we have those foundations and understand those things, we're just going to be better all around as adults. Well, uh, both things that you guys have said as your aha moments, I easily could say, you know, and that for sure. I'm going to take it to a personal level in that, it was, we just try to do our job the best we can. And when she said that my gym was a safe space for her mm. to be who she wanted to be. I mean, that's, that, that's all we ever want for our kids. We want it to be the safe space because we, especially at the elementary level, because we still feel like we're in charge of somebody's baby. I mean, at the high school level, yes, but you know, that it really is our job. And when you have somebody because there are there are people in our profession, not PE, just teaching altogether that that don't take that into consideration that you know this is some of these kids' safe space to be themselves. And you've got to allow kids to express themselves, whether you agree with their expression or not. It's it, it really is. And that I mean, when she said a lot of those things, honestly, it it, it was hard to not and get choked up with that, you know? But that comes back to, guys, is the connections we make, right? And everybody in our world has made a connection with a student that we didn't know we made until, and then when you hear it from them later in life as an adult, it's kind of that, you know, why in the heck am I still in this job? I can't wait to do this. You know, our, our days are harder, especially with COVID. But think about how many times during COVID, right, that just a teacher showing up and saying something to a kid, that was a safe time for them. Or how many times do we tell ourselves, nobody cares, we're devalued, right. we're unappreciative. And although sometimes that is true, it's 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 okay to feel that way, but we're, we're, you're not devalued. Listen to, to just right. one of our students. Our students appreciate it. That's who we cater to. Don't worry about all the political madness right. and you know, it's too bad that, you know, they focus only on the state mandated tests. It's too bad that they don't allocate enough instructional time. It's too bad. They don't care. They don't give us funding. But the students don't know that. We can have all those barriers and challenges and that weighs us down. But man, after talking to Madison today, I am fired up to start this school year. I don't want to go back in the classroom. <laughs> you know, and, and, and to be honest so with you, much. and to be honest with you, this is where I'm going to take it to a funny level. When she said that gymnastics, she remembers one of the most because 
she holds herself to a high standard in that because I threw a bean bag at her, it kind of loosened her up. And I'm sitting here thinking, was it the bean bag or was it because I could only do the Creed Bratton <laughs> version <laughs> of a cartwheel? So my cartwheel was the worst. Well, well, I can't believe you told me that. Yeah. Oh, hey, guys, this is how you do a cartwheel. Oh, I don't I'm know. supposed to go and fall over the top, but you know what? I mean. I didn't know you told that. I mean, I know it's in our standards, but if we don't have the proper sometimes mats and other stuff, what Keith, you you have difficulty even teaching dance. <laughs> I, correct, correct. But I'm just saying, like you know, you would think that a kid would be a little more loosey goosey when they see a, a a teacher, a teacher, not another student, a teacher modeling something, and that <laughs> model is that. <laughs> no, I you mean, probably I can do this. I'm doing it. You probably had a student model it. No, I did the cartwheel. I promise you. I tried to do the cartwheel. I mean, it was horrible. It was like a cart round off. And mm -hmm. honestly, for those of you that have seen the office when Creed Bratton had to do it, that's exactly what my cartwheel looked like for these kids. <laughs> oh my goodness. So let's just say that nobody was looking at my version of gymnastics and going to the Olympics and saying, yes. Well, Mr. Kramer did it that way. He gave us a 10. <laughs> that's amazing all right you guys um that, what a great way to start kind of i guess we would call that season two you know we had 14 episodes in season one i guess yeah we'll call this season two sure. we'll start it out so madison or captain martin being a 15 yeah. uh guest um what a great way to kick off the next school year so um awesome and I can for our viewers, I think we're, we're deciding that we're going to try to do this every other week then to try to squeeze this in. But obviously, you know, pay attention on, you know, Twitter. I'm at Morton Moves. Keith, you're, what was your Twitter? CMS at, at CMS uh, PE225. And then Romberger, what's yours? AROM07. And then for all our listeners, you could always go to pizzape.org so that you can view this on our YouTube channel. And you could also listen to it on most streaming uh, platforms such as Spotify, Apple, Google, so you can listen to these podcasts. So everybody, you ready? Ciao. Ciao.